Hey everybody, it's Nicole Cassano. I'm here to teach you how to authentically connect to your audience. So we'll be talking about that today and how you can identify what personality type you are so that you can use that information to talk to your audience in an authentic way. So I'm just going to give it a few seconds, see if we have some people hop on. Hi, Jen. So I'm gonna give it a few seconds. We'll see who hops on here. I'm a little early, I think. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. So hey, Amy, you made it. So, um, hey, Rachel. So I'm just gonna, we'll let that go. And while we're waiting for some people to pop on, can we all just give a whole bunch of hearts to our fearless leader, Kimberly Brooke, for having that beautiful, beautiful baby Watson. He's so precious. My ovaries are aching. He's so cute, I'm so proud of her. Yes, all those hearts, give me some more hearts, that baby, he's our second Color Street baby. How amazing is that? Two Color Street babies for Kimberly, so cool. All right, you're in the car, Amy. <laughs> Don't let me distract you. <laughs> want me to dance for you? Got some music playing? I need some music going, huh? Hey, Haley, how are you? <laughs> Guys, I'm, so, I'm in a good mood today. Can you tell? You want to know why I'm in a good mood? I'm going to tell you why I'm in a good mood. I got something in the mail today that makes everybody happy when they get it in the mail. You want to see? My magic bands are here. Ah! Disney, 21 days. I can't wait. Amy, <laughs> you think it's funny that my ovaries are aching? I think it's funny too, considering that my children are teenagers. I'd be crazy to start over now, huh? <laughs> yes, Amy in her orange dress. I love it. All right, guys. So I'm going to hop to it just for the people that catch this on the replay so that they're not listening to me babble on for 10 minutes before I get to the good stuff. Okay. So today I'm going to tell you guys how to authentically connect to your audience. So I know a lot of people are hesitant when either when they go live or they're just making regular posts um, because they're nervous. They're nervous about what other people are going to think about them. And one way to stop the nervousness is to just be who you are. And that can be a problem sometimes because as adults, as we mature, we learn to adapt to different personality types. And what we need to do today is kind of hone in and think back to who we are innately, who we were as, as a child even, so that we know what our personality is that is true to us. Because if we can pull back into that, then we can communicate with our audience in, 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 a, in an authentic way. So, um, and when they can feel that we're being real, they are going to listen. And when you feel that you're being real, you won't be nervous. You won't be nervous to go online. So if you see people doing live videos sometimes and it's like really hard to watch it because you can tell they're nervous and it feels forced, it's because they're trying to be somebody they're not. And I'm not saying that in a bad way because we all do it, but if someone is nervous and someone is stuttering over their words, chances are they're trying to put on a performance for you. They're trying to be somebody that they are not. And it's coming across that way and that's what you're picking up on. So we are going to do a little exercise today that's going to teach us who we are. And so that way, once we know what our personality type is, we can stick to that and we can resort back to that every time we make a post, every time we go live, so that we know we are being who we are and then our audience is going to pick up on that and that is how we're going to gain their trust. And that's ultimately what you want from your audience. You want trust from your customers, you want trust from your team members, you want trust from the people who are potentially going to join your team because we only wanna work with people that we trust, right? Okay, so grab your notebooks because I'm gonna have you write some things down. Everybody got their notebooks? Okay, so the first thing I want you to do, and I decided last minute, guys, that I was going to try to do this on a dry erase board. So let me know if you can see it. If not, I'll draw it on paper and hold it up to you, okay? Um, I tried to be fancy and pull out the dry erase board. So I have a silly question though. Like I'm looking at my phone and I'm seeing my words written backwards. Do you guys see it backwards or is it flipped around 
when you're watching it. Like, can everybody read that that says the word responder? Is it backwards? Crap. Okay, well, I don't know what to do about that. I'll just have to, <laughs> I'll draw it out. All I'm gonna draw for you guys is like an X, but um, you'll get the point. So just follow along with what I'm saying and write it down and you'll, and you'll understand. So the first thing we are going to do is you are going to draw a line this way on your piece of paper, like this. Everybody see that? All right, I'm just going with it, Amy. Okay, on this side, you are going to want to write the word thinker. So if you're looking at your piece of paper, on the left, I want you to write the word thinker. And on the right, I want you to write the word feeler. And we are going to determine if you are a thinker or a feeler. So when you're dealing with people and you're making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you do it? Do you rely on analysis and your thoughts? Do you have to have facts in front of you in order to make a decision or when you're dealing with a difficult person? Or are you a person that relies on their intuition and their emotions? So if you like analysis, if you are a fact finder, if you like to, it makes sense, Danielle? Okay, so you can see what it says. Sorry about that, guys. I wasn't really thinking that this was gonna be backwards. So, and I don't know how to fix that. I gotta figure that out. Um, all right, so if you, if you are a person who likes to have an, an analysis and that's how you make decisions, then you are a thinker. And if you are a person that like goes with their gut and you feel with your emotion, then you are a feeler. So you need to figure out which one of those you are. Now, the next thing I want you to do is draw a line up and down like this. And then at the top, hi, Sarah, thanks for joining us. We're just getting into this, so if you guys missed the beginning, just try your best to follow along, and you can catch it on the, on the replay. And if you are on the replay, hashtag replay so that we know that you caught it on the replay and it bumps it to the top so no one else misses the information. Sarah, you're a thinker. I'm a feeler, I think. We're all different, but that's okay, and that's why we are going to appeal to different audiences. So, you've gone up and down. Now at the top, I want you to write the word responder. And at the bottom, I want you to write the word leader. So next, we need to determine if we are responders or if we are a leader. So the way that you would try to, if you don't know, if you don't know immediately by looking at those words, Here's something that you can think about. So if you want, what you want to do is think back to, um, well, let's put it this way. Like, do you respond to people's needs right away? Like if somebody needs something, are you like, is that what makes you tick? Do you like jump up out of your seat to, to respond to them? If that's the case, then you are a responder. But if you're a person that likes to take the initial action on things, like if you walk into a room and something needs done and people are just sitting there, if you're the person that's like, okay, let's go, you do this, you do this, you do this, then you are a leader. But if you're not really sure which one of those things you are, because as we get older and as we learn, as we mature, and we adapt to our surroundings and become well-rounded people, sometimes we forget what we innately are because those of us that are leaders have to learn how to become responders and those of us that are responders have to learn how to become leaders so that we can be effective humans. So this is kind of where we get lost and we try to be something that we really aren't. So what we need to do right now today is th think about who we are innately, who we were born to be. So what I want you to do is kind of think back to a, a birthday party that you had when you were a small child, maybe like eight or nine years old. And if you didn't have a party, just think back in that situation when you were a child. Put yourself back there. So if you were a child at your birthday party and you, it came time to like set up the games and play the games. And it has come time to pass cake around to all your guests. And it's time for you to mingle and initiate conversation with the people that came to your party. Did those activities drain you or did they stimulate you? 
Were you excited to set up the games and play with your friends? Were you excited to pass out cake to everybody and make sure that everybody had a piece of cake? Were you excited to go around to all your aunts and uncles and cousins and friends and thank them for coming? Or did that drain you? Did that scare you? As a child, not now, because it could be different now, but as a child, what did that do to you? So <clears throat> if it drained you, you're probably a responder. And if those kind of things stimulated you and sprung you into action, then you are a leader. So think about that. So think about if you're a thinker, a feeler, a responder, or a leader. So first figure this out and then figure this out. And then once you have, I want you to put an X in the quadrant that you belong in. So for me, I'm kind of right here. I'm, I'm a feeler and a leader. So like this would be my quadrant down here. So everybody put an X where they belong. What quadrant do you fit into? Okay, everybody have that? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you your personality type by which X you put, which quadrant you put your X in. That's how we'll know what your personality type is. Ready? Everybody ready to find out? Okay. So if you are up here, if this is your ex, you, my friend, are a fascinator. Woo, isn't that fascinating? You're a fascinator. Okay. So you are a fascinator. So what is a fascinator? Fascinators endear people with their wisdom. So you are a fascinator. I'm just going to write this here. even though you're looking at it backwards. And you endear people with your wisdom. So what does that mean? I'm going to tell you. Here's where you'll want to take notes if you're a fascinator. If you are not a fascinator, still take notes because you're going to want this information for another training that we do down the road. So you love to share your wisdom with people. And the reason you do that is you want to let your audience know that you are a reliable source. That's how you connect. That's how you gain trust with your audience. You want them to know you're a reliable source by sharing your wisdom with them. So you excel at planning. You love to plan things. You like to plan parties. You like to plan posts. You are a planner. It makes you tick inside when you get to plan. You are also encouraging. You like to encourage others. And uh, you are a good audience member yourself. So my fascinators out there are like all ears listening to me right now. They are good audience members themselves. And the reason is, is they like to gain that wisdom so that they can share that wisdom. So you are a good audience member yourself. You enjoy getting others to perform. So you, you enjoy talking to people and getting them to take action on something. Uh, you love to watch others have fun. So we have some people out there that are having fun and I'm not saying you don't enjoy fun yourself, but you do like to, you know, you're kind of the person that likes to sit there and maybe just watch the other people having a good time and making crazy fools out of themselves sometimes, right? You're kind of like the wallflower. And you love to share trivia. So if you're out to dinner with people, you know, you like to ask questions like, did you know? Or how about this fact? You like trivia. That makes you tick. It's enjoyable to you. Here are some famous fascinators. You are in the company of George H.W. Bush and Hillary Clinton. They are fascinators. They love to dazzle you with their wisdom and facts. And um, so what you like to do as a fascinator is you are really good at presenting Color Street in a factual way. You like to share the vision of the company with people, the culture of the company. You like to tell people um, all the competitive advantages they have by being with our company or by using our product. You love to tell people that. You love to tell people how it saves them time when they're using the product. You like to tell people how we have um, a patent product. So depending on whether you're approaching um, a stylist or a customer, you love to share the facts about the company with people. Um, oh, and here's another one. You anticipate 
your audience's questions before they even have them. That's the planner in you. So if you're the type of person that likes to anticipate all the things that are people, people are going to ask you before they ask them and you're just ahead of the game, you, my friend, are the fascinator. You're up here in this corner. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk about the opposite of the fascinator. The opposite of the fascinator down here in this quadrant are the performers. Okay, so if you're down here, you are a performer. So I know this is backwards. I just don't want to create confusion. So if you're looking at your paper, kind of flip it around, not where I'm at. So you here as a performer, you're in the quadrant between the feeler and the leader right down here. Okay. And you like to entertain others. That's why you are the performer. You have an entertainment value to yourself. Um, you love the spotlight. When the light is shining on you, you love it, you thrive, you jump into action when all eyes are on you in the room. You love that. And you entertain and you gain trust to your audience by using your body language, your voice, your use of words, and you physically model the key concepts and explanations. Can you tell I'm kind of a performer? I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm like here. I'm this whole half. I'm an inspirer and a, and a performer. And you'll see that you might teeter like on the cusp of one or the other. Um, like this is totally me over here and I'll tell you why I'm an inspirer in a little bit. But so the reason I like, I think I'm a performer is I'm Italian. I like to talk with my hands. Like I embody everything I have in me to try to convey a story to people. So where are my performers? Do we have any performers? I know we had a lot of fascinators in there. Jen, you never thought of yourself as a fascinator, but you, are you up there in that quadrant? That's interesting. So you learned something about yourself today. Okay, so, um, so you like to express your ideas to make your audience happy as a performer. And you endear your audience by entertaining them. You like to perform spontaneously, so you're kind of that person that just kind of bursts into song or gets up and dance, dances out of nowhere. If you're that person, you are a performer. You love the spotlight. You crave, you make others crave your performance. So maybe people are always saying like, oh, hey, Sarah, tell that joke again. Tell that joke again that you told us last night at dinner. Like you make people crave your performance. People want to hear you tell a story. People want to see you perform, whether you sing or dance. You make people crave your entertainment if you're a performer. You keep people laughing. You like to tell jokes. You're funny. You let your personality shine through. Um, you enjoy um, when other people laugh. So it's like that's where you get your, your, your mojo, your energy comes from other people's laughter. Um, and you relate to your audience as an entire whole. This is really important too. So you can see a whole audience as one personality. Some people are unable to do that. Some people have to pinpoint each ind individual person as as who they're addressing and some people can take a whole crowd and give that one whole crowd a personality and performers can do that. They can figure out what the majority of the crowd is feeling and they can play into that. So that's a performer. Uh, here we go. Famous, per famous performers would be Bill Clinton and Angelina Jolie. They are your classic performers. All right, so next we're going to go up one right here to our inspirers. So if you are in between a responder and a feeler right here, you are an inspire. Oh, I forgot my P. <laughs> P, there's a P in inspire. <laughs> inspirer, you are an inspirer. And then um, I forgot to write this. So down here is a performer. Okay, so my inspirers. Oh, and then I, I should also mention, I think I forgot to say this. So your, so your performer, your endearing characteristic is your charisma. So up here, if you are a fascinator, you, en you endear people with your wisdom. As a performer, you have charisma. And as an inspirer, you endear people with your spirit. You're a spirited person. So you have spirit up here if you are an inspirer. 
So let's talk about my inspirer friends, my kindred spirits. I'm also an inspirer. I think I'm more of an inspirer than I am a performer, but I, be, I have beca become a performer, I think, over time because I needed to. But I think innately, like my, like I was born as the inspirer up here. So let's talk about inspirers. Um, you have a very caring nature and you have an intuition to meet people's needs. So if you are an empath, like you just, you care about people, you go out of your way to help people, you're a fixer. If you're a caring person by nature, chances are you are an inspirer. This is how you gain your audience trust. So you show them how caring you are, how much you care about them, and that's how they begin to trust you. Uh, you have awesome storytelling abilities. So you love to tell a story. Um, you can conjure up the perfect story to make a point. So if you're trying to prove a point to, some, to someone, chances are as an inspirer, you will draw back on a previous experience that you have and you'll tell that person that experience um, in order to get your point across. So I find myself doing that a lot. So if you find yourself doing that, you are probably an inspirer. All right, so here are some of your traits. You endear people with your spirit. You build rapport easily and on the fly. So you can meet people and immediately you can connect with them and make them love you. You can build rapport like that. If you can do that, you are an inspirer. You are flexible and adaptable. So, you know, if you walk into a situation and it's not exactly what you expected, you can just adapt to it and go with the flow very easy. If you can do that, you are an inspirer. Naturally caring, we talked about that. You can read people easily. So, you know, if you meet somebody and like right off the bat, you can kind of figure out what type of person they are, you're probably an inspirer. And uh, you enjoy uh, sharing stories, which I already said. And here are some famous inspirers, Barack Obama and Diana, Princess of Wales. Do I have any Princess Diana fans out there? She was totally an inspirer, right? Caring heart, everybody loved her. That's how she connected with her audience. And that's why she was one of the most loved princesses in the world. She was very caring and endearing and she, that came across with the people that she connected with. And that's why they loved her. All right, so. Last but not least, do I still have you guys with me? Some of you, not all of you left me. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, down here in this corner, if you are down here, you are an energizer, like a bunny rabbit. Energizer bunny, energizer. And your endearing, what you lead with is your courage. If you are an energizer, you are a courageous person. So you have courage. If you are an energizer, do I have any energizers on here with me? Okay, so this is how you build your audience trust. If you are an energizer, you build their trust by giving them confidence. You are, you pump them up. You're a pep talker if you are an energizer. So you can fire them up to get the job done. Anytime you're speaking, whether it's to your customer, you are pumping them up. By the time you're done talking to them, they're buying color street nails for everybody in their neighborhood. They wanna get it done, they can't wait. If you are an energizer talking to your team, they are BQ and every month you are energizing them, you are pumping them up. So you know, if you think about it, like a lot of sports coaches are energizers probably innately. That's what they do, that's what they're good at, that's how they connect with their team. They are energizers. They are thinkers and they are leaders. So, oh, Danielle, we have an energizer. Okay, that's good. All right, so. If you are an energizer, you welcome competition and challenges. You love that. And I know she's not in here because she teaches, but she'll probably hit it on the replay. Ashley Pyle, if you guys know Ashley, I think she's definitely an energizer and a performer, but she is an energizer because one of her favorite little sayings, one of her buzzwords are, she always says, I smell a challenge. So, <laughs> I am, I've asked her several times actually to come into this group and do a little pep talk on her I smell a challenge. Every time, you know, we were on the cruise and that's when the email came out about the duochrome nails and the first thing out of Ashley's mouth was, I smell a challenge. 
And if you know Ashley, she is amazing. And she kind of like shot to the top right away um, when she signed up to be a color street stylist. So she's definitely an energizer. So if you love competition, if you love a challenge, you are an energizer. She is a badass baby. So Ashley, if you're catching this on the replay, because I know you probably will, I would love you to hop into the comments at least and tell everybody about your I smell a challenge attitude, because I feel like people need some of that in their lives. So, okay, so let's keep going. So, sorry, energizers, the storyteller in me. See what's happening? I'm, I'm the storyteller. <sighs> See, this is real stuff. It's the real deal. So let me get back on track. Okay, so you are an energizer if you hold passionate beliefs. Energizers have very passionate belief, so, and they aren't afraid to tell it to you. So if you are very strong-willed like that, you're probably an energizer. Um, and in innately, in, in innately, you have leadership quality. So if you are a born leader right off the bat, you are probably an energizer. You have a very powerful, powerful presence. Um, so you walk into a room and command everybody's attention. People know you're there, all eyes on you. You are probably an energizer. You enjoy pumping up the crowd. That's what makes you tick. You love doing it. You love uh, pushing energy on people. And you are a fan of puns. That's a funny little uh, tidbit of trivia for you. You're a fan of puns. So if you are punny, you're probably an energizer. Uh, examples of famous energizers would be George W. Bush and Sarah Palin. Many excellent sports coaches are energizers, which I already said. I'm reading my notes. Can you tell? All right, so we know that. So it makes sense, right? They go, in the, they go into the locker room at halftime, and that team comes back out. They're all pumped up, and all of a sudden, they're winning the game. That's because their coach is an energizer. That's how they – and they trust their coach because the coach is coming off authentically as an energizer. They trust him. They believe in him. They're going to go out there and make it happen. There you have it. Okay. They have a, they, and also energizers kind of have a, if I can do it, so can you kind of attitude, right? That's how they pump you up. So now that you know what your personality type is most authentic to you, you need to go out there and use it to your advantage. So here it is. So who, who are you? If you haven't told me who you are in the comments, drop it in the comments. Tell me who you are. Now, this is how you are authentically going to connect to your audience. If you stay true to what that is, people are going to respond to you. So now I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna give you some ideas of what you can be saying, what you can be doing, and what you can be posting as each of these personality types. So, here we go. If you are a fascinator, I'm circling back around, so I'm talking to my fascinators again up here. My fascinators who endear people with their wisdom. If you are a fascinator, some of the things that you should be talking about on your live videos and some of the things that you should be posting on your personal wall and in your VIP page and on your business pages, like the way you should be communicating with your audience is you should be telling them interesting facts. And it can be about anything. It doesn't always have to be about Color Street. It can be anything that you yourself find interesting. Your audience is probably going to find interesting as well because your vibe attracts your tribe. So I want you to remember this as I go through these ideas that I'm going to give you that you can be posting as each personality type. You want to stick to this at first uh, because your vibe attracts your tribe. If, if you are authentically communicating as a, fascinator, a fascinator, and you're posting things that fascinators are interested in hearing, then you're going to attract more fascinators. And when you attract more fascinators and you're talking as a fascinator, they're gonna be fascinated with you. They are going to connect with you authentically. There will be no show, there will be no acting. You can pop on the live without even thinking about it. You can talk to them and they are gonna love what you're saying because you're sharing trivia. They love to hear trivia. You guys are all wise and showing your wisdom. Get what I'm saying? So it's like this with every single one of these personality types. So if you are a fascinator, you're going to want to share trivial facts on your page because that's going to attract people. That's where you're going to get the most response from your people. They are going to interact with your post because you are lighting their fire. They're, they're lit up when they see trivia facts. They're like, oh, oh, I'm going to answer this. This is amazing. I love this. This is so entertaining to me. And so this is why you need to be doing these things. So you want to share interesting facts. 
you want to post brain teasers and puzzles and riddles. So all of those things that you see other people doing, sometimes we just copy it because we see other people posting a riddle or we see other people posting a brain teaser. So we think we should do that too, just to get generic engagement, no. From now on, you need to do this, it's a strategy. This is a strategy. If you are a fascinator, you are posting brain teasers and riddles because you want to attract the people that like brain teasers and riddles and interesting facts because that's how you, that's what you convey naturally. That way when you hop on to your live and you start talking as yourself, as a fascinator, and you start geeking out on all kinds of like interesting facts that you know, people are going to be all ears. They're gonna be like, oh my God, she's amazing. Listen to her, she has all these fun facts. I love hearing people with fun facts. They're gonna rave about you. And then you are connecting with them authentically. So, you are posting those things. Um, Oh, let's see. Oh, they also like to know, to know funny things that other people do and recipes and crafts. So it's just kind of a more creative spin on sharing facts with them. So if you're sharing recipes, um, crafts, DIY projects, fascinators also are attracted to that because remember, they like wisdom. They like to know how to do things. So you can post things like that and you can also plan surprises because remember, if you are a fascinator, you probably love to plan things. So if you plan surprises, like little games for your audience members, they're going to love that as well because they're probably planners too. So they will appreciate the fact that you planned a fun game for them. So plan surprises and tell uh, analytical stories. So, you know, figure out who they are. Once you start gaining your audience, you know, maybe, maybe as an, as a fascinator and a person of wisdom, you know, I don't know, maybe, uh, you have a whole bunch of people who are maybe like in the like maybe they're math teachers, you know, because they're analytical. They love facts. They love they love things to have the same outcome because they're numbers and all that stuff. So maybe you'll want to post, you know, or tell stories about like math and post math jokes, things like that. Like whatever it is, just figure out who your audience is and post things and tell stories that appeal to them. Okay, so performers, we're coming back down here. To the end, to the opposite of our fascinators, we are going to our performers. Okay, so if you are a performer, here are some things that you should be doing to connect with your audience. You can do impressions. If you have some funny impressions that you like to do, maybe you could hop on your live and do impressions because you know, like I said, people you they want they crave your performances. So if they love to see your impressions, every time you hop on a live, maybe they're going to tune in because they want to see what impression you do that day. Um, maybe you can read a dramatic monologue. Maybe you're really funny when you do that. Maybe you do an accent, you know, maybe you have an English accent or a Boston accent. You can read a funny mon monologue, whatever makes your audience laugh. If you're a performer and you love the spotlight, perform for them. They will love it and they'll keep coming back for more and you'll love it because you love doing it. And that's how you guys are going to connect. Perform a stunt. I did a stunt when I won the cruise. I let my kids feed blindfold me and feed me baby food. That was a stunt. I was performing. That was, you know, part of part of who I am authentically. I was able to do that. I wasn't even nervous. I love making fun of myself. It was authentic to me and tons of people tuned in and it was hilarious and it was all good. So do a stunt if you are a performer. Create a character. You know, maybe <laughs> Maybe you turn into somebody when you get in front of the camera. Maybe you have like a silly hat and glasses that you put on every time you get in front of the camera to do a how-to video on your color street. Create a character that you can perform. Um, or you can offer a performance. Maybe you're a singer. Maybe you're a dancer. Maybe you're a stand-up comedian. Whatever you are, whatever your talent is, if you like to perform that talent, offer a performance. Maybe you can say, hey, if I hit this amount of sales, uh, this month, I'm going to go on live and sing Amazing Grace for you because I'm a singer and I'm a performer. I'm not going to do that. I can't sing. I'm just saying if you are a performer, maybe that's something that you can offer. And all right, let's move on. Inspirers. Here are some things that you can post as an inspirer up here to connect with your audience. Um, so inspires, we are storytellers. We, we are visual people, whether we're telling stories with our words or telling stories with, with graphics or photographs or pictures, whatever the case may be, tell funny stories. People who are drawn to inspires love to hear inspiring stories themselves. 
They love to hear funny stories, just any kind of stories. They just want to be, you know, they, they're like the little kids that wanted bedtime stories read to them. They just love to hear stories. That's how they connect with people. So if you are an inspirer, you want to tell stories often on your page, whether you're going live and telling them or writing them out in posts. Um, you want to tell personal anecdotes. So if there, you know, if something's happening and you have a personal story, something that you've experienced that can relate to the situation or topic at hand, share that. They love to, you know, you love to share as an inspirer and the people that are going to be attracted to you love to feel that connection with you and they want to hear you um, kind of getting vulnerable with them. So make sure you uh, share personal anecdotes and tell stories. Um, use pictures and videos to illustrate your point. Um, most people who are drawn to inspirers love to their visual people as well. So if you have graphics, if you have nail fees, if you have video how to's those are things that you want to be sharing to your people because they can identify with that and you feel comfortable and happy sharing those things as well um insert surprising information so that kind of you know maybe you have a little bit of a fascinator in you as an inspirer like every once in a while you just kind of want to drop in some surprising information just to kind of keep your people on their toes they do enjoy that once in a while and you want to here's the big one for inspirers initiate one-on-one -on -one conversation so if you are an inspirer that means that you like to really connect with people on a one-on-one -on -one level and your people love that too so if they are commenting on your post make sure you are taking time out of your day to respond back to their comment strike up a conversation with them maybe even hop over into their direct messages and thank them personally like hey i saw that you responded to my post today thank you so much i appreciate your support you know and always responding to what i have to say and then maybe ask them a question in relation to what they responded on just to kind of keep a little bit of a conversation going that effort goes a long way hey kristen better late than never right it's okay you can catch the replay so just kind of hop in where we are right now and hopefully you can catch up later it's okay um so yes yeah, so my inspires personal connection is a, a huge way to win over your audience you just need to take the time and personally connect with people one-on-one -on -one if you can energizers down here so here are things that you can be posting on your wall and doing in your lives if you are an energizer so you can incorporate groaners and puns so if you have you know this is where like dad jokes come in right just kind of like silly jokes things that like make people laugh or roll their eyes it's okay your audience craves those things they love to just get a funny laugh quick laugh out of you and so you know you can be punny and funny all at the same time your audience will love that they want you to create challenges for them and you love to create challenges because you are an energizer you are competitive and you love challenges so create challenges whether it be you know like okay everybody today um i want everybody to go out and take a nail fee holding an apple whatever color street nails you have on i want you to hold an apple take a nail fee and post it on the page like that's a challenge so they're going to run out and they're going to try to take a nail fee with an apple because you told them to do it because they they're like challenge accepted i want to do it you know so give them little little challenges and hold competitions you know like maybe maybe you can hold um you know, everybody has to maybe put a set of nails on that they purchased from you and then post their Nelfi in the group and whoever gets the most likes wins something. So now you've just created a competition for them. Your audience is going to thrive off of that. They love competition. You love promoting competition. Everyone's jiving if you are an energizer. And they love pep talks. So if you are going live, if you're making posts, this is where like your inspirational, good morning everybody, Rise and shine, every morning you should be making posts like that. Whether you're talking to them or writing it, your audience loves pep talks, so you should be giving it to them. Okay, so once you learn your style, become a master at it. That's really important. Um, because once you master the way to communicate with your audience, once you have that down packed, then we can learn how to dabble and the other personalities so that you're reaching everybody in your audience but that's another video so this video today i just want you to really from this point on until i hop on here again and tell you guys how you can start dabbling in the other personalities i want you to learn your personality and i want you to go out there and own it 
Just own it. I want you to figure out who you are and go be it with everything in you. That's how you're gonna start seeing a change with how your audience engages with you. I promise it. But here's the thing, you have to do it. You have to, they, you have to let them know you're here. You have to show up every day. You have to hit that live button and just go live. It's going to become easier and easier and easier to go live when you are authentically being yourself because you're not going to have to think about what you're gonna say. You're not going to have to um, you know, sit there and like, Make notes, no, you're just gonna go on there and you're gonna be you because that's who you are. You're not pretending to be anybody. It's okay if you fumble over your words. I mean, I forgot to pee and inspire, you know, whatever. It's whatever, right? It's who I am, take me or leave me. And you guys have to have the same exact kind of attitude when you're going out there and you're being who you are. Be perfectly imperfect. Nobody's looking for someone that's perfect. In fact, you wanna be as far from perfect as possible because you want every single person out there to think to themselves, oh, if she can do that, I can do it too. Because if you're too perfect, then that scares people away. And that is not what we're trying to do here. It's attraction marketing. We want to attract people to us. So go out there, be unapologetically you, authentically connect with your audience. And before I go, do I have any questions? I still have a few of you left on here with me. I know this was long. I think I've been going for a little while now. Any questions before I hop off? Anybody? You guys are quiet. No? I'll give it a second. I know it sometimes takes long to come through. I don't think so. Okay. Um, that's you. It's like Mary Poppins, right, Kristen? Perfectly imperfect in every way. Love it. Love it, love it. Okay. All right, guys, so um, you're welcome, Danielle. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you did, tag your people. Tag somebody who you think uh, would benefit from listening to this. And um, if you have any questions, I'll just check back on this video later on, and I'll try to answer any questions that you guys have. And that's it. All right, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of your day.